Greetings everyone! Recently we got a comment on one of the videos asking what did people wear back in the day when they rode their bikes. Well today we're going to be looking at vintage clothing and gear including jerseys, hats, gloves, shoes, and shorts. Let's take a look. I'm going to start out the video by taking a look at some of the older cycling gloves. Now in the really early days of cycling, from what I've seen, gloves were not a thing. People just didn't wear gloves, but uh, I think that anyone that was around in the 60s and the 70s are going to recognize this, the, uh, the knitted gloves. These are an old original pair of Trex, and they have very heavy uh, leather padding on the insides. And on the outside you have that typical ventilated uh, crocheted tops that leave a really interesting suntan on the top of your hands. <laughs> now let me put these on because they're very difficult to see if they're not on and hopefully they fit. But these are a pair of uh, late 80s, early 90s Spandex Camping Nolo bicycle gloves. Leather palms with a decent amount of padding and you've got the very bright early 90s style logos on there. Cycling caps are something I still wear all the time underneath my helmet. A lot of people don't, but these are some typical old school cycling caps, that old Moltini style. This is not an original, it's a, it's a new cap. Original caps, this is a 1983 Race Across America cap that I was wearing at the beginning of the video. Uh, very stylish. <laughs> and uh, this is a Pepsi cap, an old Pepsi cap. Does it say anything else on it? It does not. It just says Pepsi under the brim. So when you flip it up, you can proudly advertise Pepsi. This is uh, probably from the 80s, I would think. And uh, lastly, I have my very my original Sony Cycle cap. We had a little team back around 81, 82, and this was my original cap from that. Barely fits on my head anymore. And if, in case you're wondering what Sony was, it was a, a made in China bicycle, which was about all I could afford back in 81, but I rode the snot out of it until literally the crank fell off and I couldn't get it back on. <laughs> and while we're talking about cycling caps, we can't forget the winter cycling caps, which are made out of wool and are really cool and really warm for winter weather. The only problem with these is that you really can't wear your helmet over them. They weren't designed to be worn with helmets. And here's a, a really neat Chinelli. Like my ears? <laughs> I've worn my helmet with that. Have you? Yeah. It's not great. You know, you can do it. I really like the style of these. Very Euro. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit about classic cycling shoes. Uh, they were made out of leather usually with leather soles. This is a, a later bottle with a plastic sole. These are the well-known Deto Pietro shoes. And here is the original box that they came in. And the, this is a pair of Italia. As you can tell, the styling is very similar. These shoes all had cleats on the bottom of them and the line here, would the, your pedal would go into the, the cleat and you would tighten with straps on the top, your toe clip and your leather strap. And you can actually see the wear marks here where the leather strap had worn on the shoe. The, sole, the soles on those are leather. Yeah, these are older, so they're leather. These are newer, they became plastic. But none of these held up very well. They were kind of lightweight and uh, you could go through a pair in a couple of years easily. Uh, the cleats originally were held on by tiny little nails, like you can see a couple little nails here, but normally you'd have to tight, you'd hammer in a bunch of little nails here, and then later on, screws were used. Uh, at first, two screws, then one screw as they developed. 
Uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, what they were made out of. The, uh, the cleats were originally made out of metal, like aluminum, like here's a pair of aluminum cleats. And the pedals were made out of steel, but once they started making the pedals out of aluminum, like the uh, 80s super record pedals, then they could no longer have metal on metal because it would mess your pedals up. So they went, they went to plastic, as you see here and as you see here. So these are the later versions, the plastic cleats. Uh, what can I say about these shoes? They're comfortable and they're, as you can tell by all the holes, they're very well ventilated. Uh, they don't have a lot of toe support. So when you're taking long rides, your toes tend to kind of get crunched up in the top here and it can become a little painful, but I'm used to it. Uh, the other interesting thing about these, as you notice, they are laced. So you have laces and you don't want your laces to get caught in the crank of the bicycle. So what you would do is you would, uh, I don't know if I can do this here, I can just try and show you. When you laced your shoes up and you made a bow like you would normally, you would take, you would gather up what was of your bow, then you would tuck it into the front of one of your laces, like that. And it would hold your laces so they wouldn't get caught up in your bike gears, which is a very good thing. Being an antique bike guy, I have to mention antique bike shoes. And here is a photo of the late, great Luciano Baruti riding in a roca with some authentic antique bicycle shoes. These look more like slippers and they were incredibly lightweight. Okay, now we're gonna take a look at vintage cycling shorts. And when you talk about vintage cycling shorts, you're talking about wool for the most part. Here is an original pair of Bianchi shorts, a little worse for the wear and uh, while they have, I guess you call it padding on the inside, the older shorts had a chamois, a real chamois, which used to be mountain goat. Now it's made of sheepskin most of the time when you see them, and it's, a, it's very thin, it, there's really no padding, but it is comfortable when you ride with it. Um, it's, uh, the wool shorts, what can I say about the wool shorts? Uh, they don't hold their form very well, so, after you wear them for a while, your, your, your pants start looking like Charlie Brown, that kind of baggy, falling down look. Uh, a lot of people back in the day would, would uh, sew buttons on these and use suspenders to hold them up. And uh, that's one way to go with it. Uh, I wanted to show you, here's another pair of Lambertini shorts that are about from uh, late 70s, early 80s. Again, wool. And these, the chamois had worn out and I, had, I just went to the automotive store, got a new chamois, and went to my local seamstress, and she put a new one in, and she did a really good job, and it's held up really well. So if you find a pair of old uh, shorts that have a chamois that looks like that it's suspect or corroding or ripped, you can always have a new one put in. Uh, now, I wanted to talk about two different shorts made by the same company, Nectar, and these are shorts that Joe and I had gotten 1982. We got them for a Christmas present. My mom went into a cycling store and got us each a pair of shorts. So these were both hanging on the shelf at the same time. Same company. This is a pair of Nectar wool and acrylic blend shorts for people that were into the wool. And by this time they were starting to blend acrylic in to not only the shorts but the jerseys. And hanging on the rack at the same time spandex, nectar spandex shorts. And the thing about this spandex, it's, spandex, it's not exactly the same as modern spandex. It's not nearly as uh, flexible. It's kind of, it's more silky and it's a little different, but it's comfortable. And actually I haven't worn, I, these are, this is the same original chamois. So I have not worn that out. Crazy. And I've been riding with these shorts forever and ever. Now we're going to move on to jerseys, and jerseys from the very beginning were all about wool. Uh, in, the, in the 1920s and even before, big wool jumpers were worn, even with shorts. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at some of our reproduction wool jerseys we have here, as well as some of our original jerseys we have from the 60s and the 70s. Let's take a look. 
The first jerseys we're going to be looking at are reproductions of famous race teams from the 60s and 70s. Most are made by Woolistic and are 100% wool. The famous Moltini race team jersey in the colors of Belgium, Eddie's country. And here's the unmistakable jersey of the Brooklyn Chewing Gum Team, which raced from 1970 to 1977. The Italian Vitadello Team raced from the mid to late 1960s. This is a reproduction of a 1950s Team Frages jersey as worn by 1950 Tour de France winner Ferdy Kubler. Note the pockets on the front as was the style of the time. I've never tried putting anything in the front pockets of this jersey while riding. I'm guessing it would be a bit uncomfortable. Here's a reproduction of a very early style of jersey about 1914 with the Capital City Wheelman's logo on the front, a cycling group from the early 1900s. The wood buttons up the side of the neck are surprisingly useful when it warms up a bit. Now here are some authentic jerseys from the 60s and 70s. Most were purchased off eBay and came from Italy. These are mostly jerseys from local cycling clubs and teams from back in the day. Buying jerseys like this to wear can be a bit tricky as there's no real way to try them on before buying and the sizing on the tags can be misleading. Just see my video on stretching out a wool jersey. You can find some really amazing designs. I love the goat on this jersey from Parma. It's also fun researching the jerseys when you get them. For instance, Bagley Garden is a large sports complex in Rimini. Now in case you thought we forgot about vintage helmets, we did not. We did a whole video on them. And I'm gonna put a link at the end so you can click on that and watch that if you like. Here is a slightly later jersey from the early 80s, and by this time they were starting to blend the wool with acrylic. Here's another acrylic blend. Eventually, as some of you probably remember, they went over to a heavy polyester fabric for jerseys. Yuck, I hated that stuff. The lighter fabrics that came after were a relief. Thanks very much everyone for coming along with us as we checked out some of this older vintage cycling gear. I find that when I wear it, it does add a little bit of enjoyment to my rides when I'm riding on the older vintage bikes. So give it a shot and see what you think. Just don't wear those wool jerseys in the really hot weather because they're a killer. See you next time. Bye bye.